In recent years, the petro monarchies of the Persian Gulf have shown an increasing interest in glitzy sporting events, from martial arts to cycling to football to car racing. While the Arab courts of these monarchies are vying with each other in hosting such events, they're also trying to invest heavily in popular sports clubs around the world. Among these oil-rich monarchies, Bahrain has played without doubt a pioneering, albeit controversial, role. Critics accuse the House of Khalifa that has long been ruling Bahrain with an iron fist of sports washing, or the use of sports to distract attention from ongoing human rights concerns on the island. In one of the recent sports washing moves last December, the Al Khalifa royal family of Bahrain invested in the Spanish football club Cardoba through this man, Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the son of Bahrain's current king and the president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee. But Nasser is also the commander of the Royal Guard and has under his belt the brutal repression of the 2011 pro-democracy movement in Bahrain. Back then, Nasser created a special commission to identify and punish more than 150 members of the sporting community for their peaceful demonstrations, according to Bahrain News Agency. In a televised speech in April that year, Nasser warned, to all those who call for the fall of the regime, a wall will fall on their hands. Anyone is involved in this matter, and their support networks will be punished, be it an athlete, an activist, or a politician. Today is the day of judgment. Bahrain is an island, and there is no escape. An inveterate athlete, Nasser has been trying to shoehorn himself as the representative of the younger generation. But his key role in the regime's oppression has ironically earned him the nickname Torture Prince inside the country. The person behind Bahrain's sports washing strategy is clearly Prince Nasser. He is behind of the creation of the Bahrain 13 endurance team. He finances the Bahrain McLaren cycling team and is very much involved with the Cordoba football club here in Spain. But besides this, he holds major sports related uh, positions in Bahrain and is president of the um, Olympic Committee in Bahrain. What's interesting about Prince Nasser is that he has been accused of personally torturing and beating at least two people during the 2011 crackdown. And because of these credible allegations, a UK court withdrew his diplomatic immunity in 2014. It is probably because of these allegations and these accusations that he is so committed and so involved in uh, the sports washing strategy in Bahrain. Prince Nasser is also the head of an elite unit that has participated in the bloody war in Yemen, and he has personally fought in Saudi-led coalition missions accused of war crimes. Since the 2011 protests, the Bahraini regime has continued to muzzle the voices of dissent through tactics such as the dissolution of political parties, passport confiscations, and torture. At the same time, the regime has been using hosting sports events as a form of soft power. In 2016, the tiny island hosted 452 mixed martial arts athletes competing from 51 nations, the largest of its kind in the Middle East. On the eve of the competition, the MMA champion Muhammad Mirza sent from prison a letter to the International MMA Federation. Part of the letter read, I am just one of many political detainees whom the Bahraini authorities have kept in prison since 2011. I was kidnapped by military forces at a checkpoint. I was questioned and psychologically and physically tortured over the course of three months, then tried before a military court that fell short of standards of justice and integrity. 
In fact, while Manama's goal is to represent itself as the Middle East's sporting capital, many Bahraini athletes are languishing behind bars. In a different case, the Bahraini regime tried to extradite refugee footballer Hakim Al Arabi to the country. Hakim fled to Australia in 2014 before being sentenced in absentia to 10 years in jail for taking part in the 2011 protests. He was arrested on arrival in Thailand in November 2018 and spent more than 70 days in Thai prison on the basis of an Interpol red notice issued by Bahrain but he was later released, mainly due to public pressure worldwide. Um, it is definitely ironic that Bahrain tries to present itself as the Middle East sports capital whilst persecuting and torturing athletes. So whilst Prince Nasser takes Bahrain to the world sports elite, he, in national television he publicly calls for the punishment of athletes who had taken part in the 2011 pro-democracy demonstrations and in fact he had created a comedy of inquiry to investigate which specific athletes had taken part in the 2011 demonstrations to punish them. Honestly this doesn't take us by surprise as hypocrisy is both at the core of sports washing and at the core of the uh, ruling elite. Despite its poor human rights track record, the Bahraini regime is under no sanctions or embargoes, and many international sports federations look the other way when they work with the kingdom. Since 2014, the Formula One Grand Prix has been a fixture in Bahrain, lending the island its glamour every year. In 2015, amid international pressure for blatant human rights violations, the regime launched the Bahrain Endurance 13 Triathlon Team, stating that through triathlon, people can enjoy a better life. The Bahrain shirt is now worn by the English Olympic gold medalist Alistair Brownlee, among other international triathletes. So after the 2011 pro-democracy uprising in Bahrain, and the subsequent crackdown, the authorities arrested 13 high-profile opposition leaders. And this group of individuals was known as the Bahrain 13. Um, so in an attempt to deflect the attention from the human rights violations committed against these 13 individuals, the Bahraini authorities created uh, the Bahrain's 13 endurance triathlon team. Um, so whenever someone searched Bahrain 13 in Google, information on the triathlon team would appear rather than information on the imprisoned opposition leaders and the other human rights violations um, committed against these, these individuals. Two years later, the regime launched Team Bahrain McLaren, Merida, with an estimated 14 million pound budget and stars like Vicenzi Nibali and Michael Landa again in a bid to promote the troubled kingdom through globally televised sporting events. In the words of Nicholas McGeehan for Human Rights Watch, the professional cycling team will give the country maximum exposure for a relatively modest investment. The problem for Bahrain as it seeks to launder its image is that there is a lot to cover up given its blood spattered modern history and rapidly deteriorating situation. Uh, sadly. Bahrain's sport washing strategy is working as it's very powerful. Sports has helped deviate the attention from the human rights violations, from the violence, the arbitrary arrests, the torture, and the death sentences. And it's portraying an image uh, to the rest of the world that is very far from reality. And that's why it's crucial that we speak up and we condemn the human rights violations the Al Khalifa family is carrying out to its own citizens whilst uh, whitewashing it, these uh, human rights violations through sports. After all is said and done, Bahrain is not a paradise for sports or sports people. It is an island, as Prince Nasser once put it, from which there is no escape.